mechanical system design. Today we will solve the problems on margin of safety. So here it is a problem statement. A component is made up of a plain carbon steel having a mean strength of 180 Newton per mm square. It is subjected to a mean stress of 140 Newton per mm square. The yield strength as well as stress are normally distributed with the standard deviation of 20 Newton per mm square. Determine the percentage of components likely to be failed. So the given data, the mean yield strength is a mu 180 Newton per mm square. Then mean stress mu sigma is 140 Newton per mm square. So this will be mu s 180 Newton per mm square and mu sigma is 140 Newton per mm square. Then standard deviation for the strength is uh, 20 Newton per mm square. And standard deviation for the stress is again 20 Newton per mm square. So the strength of the component is denoted by S. So the mean and the standard deviation of the strength population are mu s is equal to 180 newton per mm square and sigma s is 20 newton per mm square. So this is the mean strength and mean stress. Then stress induced in the component is a sigma. Therefore, the mean and standard deviation of the stress populations are mu sigma is 140 newton per mm square and sigma cap sigma is 20 newton per mm square. Therefore, the margin of the safety or reserve strength of the population is obtained by subtracting the stress population from the strength population. Therefore, margin of safety is the difference between the strength and stress. That is, the M is equal to S minus sigma. The mean and standard deviation of margin of safety are mu M is equal to mu S minus mu sigma. So that will be 180 minus 140, which is equal to 40 Newton per mm square. Then standard deviation of margin of safety is a sigma cap m, which is equal to the square root of standard deviation of the stress square to the standard deviation of the strength square. So 20 plus 20 bracket square under root, it will give the mean of the margin of the safety 28.28 Newton per mm square. Then percentage of components the percentage of components likely to be failed. The failure occurs if the margin of safety is less than zero. Therefore, at M, if M1 is equal to zero Newton per mm square, Z1 is equal to M1 minus mu M upon sigma M cap. So putting the value of M1, then mu M and sigma M cap, we will get the Z1 value minus one point. 41. So now this is the curve for a normal distribution curve which represents the mean of the margin of the safety plus m2 minus m f of m is on y axis. So this is the curve for standard normal distribution curve and this line is called as a mean line for the margin of the safety. In here this will represent the m is equal m1 is equal to 0. So this curve is a normal distribution curve. And next curve is a standard normal distribution curve where m is replaced by a z that is a random variable is a re, uh, replaced by a standard variable. f of z is the frequency of random variable. 
then the z1 will be equal to the minus 1.41 so z lies uh, the area from 0 to minus 1.41 and apart from that area that will be the called as a failure zone so this uh, shaded portion is the failure zone so the shaded area below the curve represent the failure zone let the area below the standard normal distribution curve from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to minus 1.41 which is equal to the area below the standard normal distribution curve from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus 1.41 therefore from the table we'll get the area under the curve from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus 1.41 which is equal to the 0.4208 therefore the percentage of components likely to be fail are calculated by using the formula equal to 0.5 minus a into 100 so 0.5 is the half of the area under the standard normal distribution curve a is the area calculated from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to uh, plus 1.41 that is a minus 1.41 into 100 so putting all the value we will get the final percentage of components likely to be fail which is equal to the 7.92 so 7.92 percentage of components are likely to be fail from the given number of the sample now we will see the comparison between the normal distribution curve and standard normal distribution curve so the parameters are first parameter is the graph of frequency against random variable so here for normal distribution curve the curve is drawn against random variable x versus frequency f of x then this line is called as a mean line mu then next area will be the 2 sigma cap then next is a 4 sigma cap and last one is the 4 6 sigma cap so whenever the curve drawn from the random variable versus frequency then such curve is called as a normal distribution curve then when the random variable is converted into the standard variable then the curve changes from normal distribution curve to standard normal distribution curve so here it is the curve which is drawn with respect to the standard variable z versus frequency f of z So here you can observe the frequency f of z on y axis so there will be no mean then area below the standard normal distribution curve is always equal to the 1 then second parameter is the random variable in normal distribution curve random variable is x in standard normal distribution curve standard variable is z then mean in normal distribution curve the mean value is mu in standard normal distribution curve the mean is equal to 0 always then standard deviation in normal distribution curve standard deviation is any value of sigma cap in standard normal distribution curve the standard deviation is always equal to the 1 then area under the curve in normal distribution curve the area under the curve is equal to the total population in standard normal distribution curve the area under the curve is always equal to the 1 so from this we will get the clear idea about the comparison between the normal distribution curve and standard normal distribution curve thank you for watching the topic of statistical consideration in the design